At this point, um, I'd, I'd like to tell you that we are going to shift, um, and I say shift uh, very purposefully, uh, from our focus on search and rescue to search and recovery. This morning, a new mission and an admission. Missing and now presumed dead, the Coast Guard carries a grim message home. I have uh, spent um, some very painful moments um, with the families tonight. Um, they have been very understanding uh, all along and, and very appreciative of what, of what we have been trying to do. And, um, and it was very difficult for me to share this information with, with them. Welcome to CBS This Morning. I'm Thalia Schurz. And I'm Russ Mitchell in Hyannisport, Massachusetts. Coming up, extensive live coverage of the crash of John F. Kennedy's plane. Good morning to you, Russ. Good morning to you, Thalia. We'll come back to you in just a moment, but we begin this morning at the Cape. I think it is safe to assume that 24 hours ago, many Americans woke up thinking that there was hope that the downed plane of John F. Kennedy Jr., his wife, Carolyn, and her sister Lauren would be found today. The Coast Guard says that hope is gone. Let me give you the latest this morning. The Coast Guard is giving up hope of finding survivors. The agency says it has now changed its mission from search and recovery, rather to search and recovery, from search and rescue. Divers will enter the water today to check out possible target sites, and President Clinton has offered his prayers to the Kennedy family. We, we go now to CBS News correspondent John Roberts, who has the latest on the investigation. John is on Martha's Vineyard. Good morning to you, John. Good morning to you, Russ. A number of factors played into that Coast Guard decision to decide to shift operations from search and rescue to now search and recovery, not the least of which was that no one would be able to survive that long in these waters. Hypothermia would set in and eventually the person would drown or their heart would stop. But late last night, uh, Rear Admiral Richard Larrabee of the Coast Guard said it was an extremely difficult decision to make. I have uh spent um, some very painful moments um, with the families tonight. Um, they have been very understanding uh, all along and, and very appreciative of what, of what we have been trying to do. And, um, and it was very difficult for me to share this information with, with them. But I, but I think they, they understood it. The announcement came after a frustrating weekend of searching a huge expanse of water and land, at one point encompassing 9,000 square miles of ocean. And while what was believed to be a possible signal from an emergency transmitter was later found to be from one of the Coast Guard's own signal boys, the NOAA research ship Rudy found enough in its sweeps at the bottom in the past two days to warrant further investigation by a team of divers from the Massachusetts State Police. Our uh, initial plan is uh, the state of Massachusetts dive team personnel will begin the day tomorrow by diving on shallow water targets of interest. Um, they will help classify these targets previously identified by side scan sonar, sonar platforms. So those divers will begin their work in the waters off Martha's Vineyard, about 40 to 80 feet of water this morning. And more recovery ships will be brought in. The Rudy will be joined by another NOAA ship, the Whiting, the Coast Guard Cutter Willow. And late this afternoon, the Navy ship, the USS Grasp, will join the operation. The Grasp was very effective three years ago in recovering the wreckage of TWA Flight 800. It carries with it a submersible robot vehicle equipped with cameras that can scan the ocean floor visually and can make identifications quite rapidly. Russ? Thank you very much, John. I want to point out to the viewers at home that I am sitting about 75 yards from the Kennedy compound down the way here. We have not seen any family members this morning. In the last few minutes, we saw a number of police officers walk down the street. If the family does make a statement, it will be in this general area. But as of now, we don't know if that's going to happen. We'll come back to Hyannisport in just a bit. Thaya, now to you in New oh, York. Thank you very much, Russ. Now, President Clinton has been in contact with the Kennedy family, offering assistance and now prayers. Bill Plant joins us from the White House with more on that. Good morning to you, Bill. Good morning, Thalia. The White House last night was the scene of a state dinner, not exactly officially a state dinner, but a huge dinner for the Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak, twice as many people as normal. And the mood, of course, was very upbeat, looking at the possibility of peace in the Middle East. But at the same time, President Clinton noted in the toast that this was a sad day for Americans. Mr. Clinton was speaking just about at the same time that the Coast Guard determined that all three on that plane had most likely perished. And we offer our prayers 
for John Kennedy, Carolyn Bissett, and Lauren Bissett, and for their families. We are reminded again that life and its possibilities are fleeting, that we mortals are obliged to be humble and grateful for every day and to make the most of every day. The president will probably have some more to say this afternoon. He has a news conference scheduled with the Israeli prime minister. We expect to hear more on the subject of the Kennedy family this afternoon when the president speaks. Tanya? Certainly. Uh, Bill Plant, have we any idea what the president might have to say this afternoon? Well, Thalia, I know that the president has always felt close to the Kennedy family. He visited with the Kennedy family, in fact, up at Martha's Vineyard in uh, Mrs. Onassis's residence, so close to the place where they're searching now for debris. Uh, he knew John Kennedy, of course, and, uh, and his wife. And I expect that the president will want to be involved in this, will want to feel close to the family, as so many people in the nation do at this time. Indeed they do. Bill Plant at the White House this morning. Thank you. Well, the world first became enchanted with John Jr. as a child growing up in the White House. As a married man, he made his home in New York City. It is a home that is now becoming a makeshift shrine to his memory. Julie Chen joins us from Lower Manhattan. Good morning to you, Julie. Good morning, Thalia. You know, New York City may seem like a big city to visitors, but it's really just a collection of small villages, one of which is Tribeca, where John F. Kennedy Jr. made his home even before he married Carolyn. Most of us uh, that either work or live in the area have seen John and his wife around the area. In the early years, we showed John around on his rollerblades and his bike, and, and in later years, with his wife and their dog. Which means he was a good person. <laughs> dog people. We thrive on dog people. Fifteen years ago, Tribeca was a rundown neighborhood. Now it's a neighborhood of trendy restaurants like Robert De Niro's Tribeca Grill. But John Kennedy would also go to small, older establishments like the River Run Cafe. The, na the neighbors around here, and this bar caters to mostly local people, all just felt that he was a, a, a neighbor. I've seen him a couple of times in Bubby's, just in the neighborhood. You know. Bubby's is a local hangout down the block from John's home. He also ate breakfast at the Socrates Diner, bought his newspaper at the Fourth Estate, and his wife Carolyn had occasional facials at Meal Fleur. I would say one of the most welcome neighbors, and most accepted neighbors in the whole area here. Since the news hit Saturday that John and his wife Carolyn and her sister Lauren were missing, scores of people have come by to drop off cards and flowers. Thalia. Julie Chen in Manhattan this morning. Stay with us for continuing coverage. Our meteorologist Craig Allen joins us now with a look at the weather, primarily around the Martha's Vineyard area where okay. the recovery effort is, of course, underway. Good morning to you. Good morning. We're still very much in that hazy, hot, humid weather pattern that continues out across there, and more than likely it's going to stay that way through the day with some changes, and those changes being showers and thunderstorms this afternoon, which could make conditions rough. Let's take a look at where that's all going on right now. And you can basically see here that there's more showers and thunderstorms to be coming along. Most of the Northeast at this time in the clear. These were a batch of showers that moved through during the nighttime last night, but it's very warm, very humid, and the haze this morning has become very thick once again. Visibilities will be running four to seven a little later this morning into the mid-afternoon hours. There will be strong southwesterly winds and seas running about two to four feet. During the course of the day, though, sometime after one or two o'clock this afternoon, you could see strong, gusty thunderstorms with heavy rains making for some rough surf, running about three to five feet in those storms. From the weather map to your hometown. In Albany, thunderstorms this afternoon, high 87. A thunderstorm is possible around Boston, too. Hazy, hot, humid in Charlotte, North Carolina. Thunderstorms around Huntsville, Alabama. Tulsa, sunny skies and a high of 97. Thunderstorms today around Indianapolis. Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, clearing and cooler. Sunny and 85 in Billings. Denver, Colorado, thunderstorms today, especially this afternoon. Sunny and 88 in Bakersfield. Salem, Oregon, sunny, the high 87 in Lewiston, sunshine and a high of 83. Coming up on this morning, our coverage of an American tragedy continues. The disappearance of JFK Jr., his wife, and his sister-in-law. We will speak to some of John Kennedy's close friends and try to separate the myth from the man. Uh, plus an intimate look at the woman who took the world's most eligible bachelor off the market, his wife, Carolyn Bissett. And we will look back at JFK Jr.'s connection to Hollywood.
stay with us. There is much more to this morning on this latest of the Kennedy family tragedies. Tragedy can strike this family over and over again, and it's a wonder how they remain so close and uh, so strong. I think their faith has a lot to do with it. Sad, you know, it's so sad. But this is the day you have to really bring up your faith. No, the gods. Tonight, meet TV's sharpest looking couple. How's that? Let me out. Watch the King of Queens at its new time. Then double your dose of Becker. Perfect. Catch Becker before Raymond and after. Come on, lady, I've seen continents drift faster than this. Becker, then don't watch another dreaded rerun. Yeah. Laugh along with an hysterical Ray run. Nice suit. Where's Gladys and the other two pips? Raymond, the King of Queens, and a double dose of Becker, CBS Tonight. You are my sunshine, my own. You when skies are gray, you'll never know, dear. Don't take my sunshine away. There was a big fire. I couldn't find mommy. I was really scared and I cried. A grown up told me that it would be okay. And then I saw her. 60,000 disasters a year all come down to one single terrible moment for someone. Call now because help can't wait. There is a In Salisbury, Maryland, the hungry are being fed. In Wind Falls, Indiana, a man who learned to read at 47 is making sure others learn earlier. Every day, someone in America is doing something to light up another life. But there is so much more to do. The light to do it is within us all. We only need to share it. Tragedy can strike this family over and over again, and it's a wonder how they remain so close and uh, so strong. I think their faith has a lot to do with it. It's just so sad, you know, it's so sad. But this is the day you have to really bring up your faith. No, the gods run in the world, and what's ever good for us is good for us. As you just heard, and as you might imagine, John F. Kennedy Jr.'s presumed death has made headlines around the world. Both Time and Newsweek magazine scrambled to make major last-minute changes in order to get special editions on the newsstands today. The apparent loss of one of New York's favorite sons was also grist for the city's gritty tabloids. Many British newspapers have also devoted pages of coverage to this tragic accident. And People magazine, which crowned Kennedy the sexiest man alive more than a decade ago, also gave him the cover in its next issue out this Friday. We are going to go back to Russ Mitchell. He is at the Kennedy family compound in Hyannisport. Russ? So far, there have been no statements from the Kennedy family. JFK Jr.'s sister Caroline remains at her home on Long Island. The rest of the Kennedy family members are here in the Kennedy compound, as I told you earlier, about 75 yards behind me. Elizabeth Caledon has more. There have been anonymous comings and goings and a glimpse of what was to have been a wedding tent being used as a makeshift church. But other than that, the compound has been more like a fortress. Test. Columnist Mike Barnacle lives four blocks away from the Kennedys in Hyannis and has known the family and shared its misfortunes over the years. Cursed, I don't know. They certainly have borne more than their fair share of tragedies more than their fair share of trauma. He says John Jr. and his wife Carolyn would have applauded the family's silence, honoring their own tradition of shunning the limelight. Remarkably private, yet remarkably normal. He'd arrive up here in Hyannisport perhaps every third weekend during the summer months. Uh, you'd see him, he'd emerge from behind the stockade fence around his mother's home, or in a 
New York Yankees baseball cap, almost always on backwards, sunglasses, eyes straight in the pavement. Ever since he was little, he's been America's golden boy who grew into the sexiest man alive. But he was merely one of the cousins to this rowdy family, known less for his place in history than his ability to organize a good touch football game. For many of us, they, they represent hope and courage and compassion. And so you have that little piece that's not there anymore. People who've come here for years to pay respects to the father never imagined they'd be saying goodbye to the son as well. Elizabeth Caledon, CBS News, Hyannisport, Massachusetts. And now back to Thalia in New York. Thank you, Russ. And we're going to turn to the accident itself now. Darkness and haze significantly reduced visibility on the night the Kennedy plane went down. John Jr. had his pilot's license for more than a year, but he was not qualified to fly on instruments alone, something more experienced pilots do in bad weather. Maggie Cooper reports. At the airport where John F. Kennedy Jr.'s flight originated, one flight school canceled half of its flying lessons Sunday due to weather. You can't really see the horizon. Knowing where the horizon lies is critical, says flight instructor Tim Samard. When it can't be seen visually, a pilot relies on instruments. At nighttime over the water, there's nothing lit on top of the water, so you're over a big black spot. Every pilot learns the basics about their cockpit instruments, but an instrument rating takes far more training. Kennedy passed the written test, but never completed all the work necessary for certification. An instrument pilot who can't see the ground or the horizon is going to keep yourselves wings level using this instrument. Kennedy was flying by visual flight rules, or VFR, on that hazy Friday night. And what about a visual flight uh, pilot who can't see the ground or the horizon? Shouldn't be where he is. That same night, veteran pilot Alan Lewant was flying to East Hampton. You saw the fact that everything was black and murky. I said, I sure wouldn't want to be a VFR-only pilot flying in that circumstance that night. What kind of disorientation would that create for a pilot? If you're trying to fly visual flight rules. If trying to fly, it, it'd be near impossible. In Canada and Europe, private pilots must be instrument rated in order to fly at night. Here in the U.S., that training takes about 40 hours. Without it, seasoned flyers say a pilot isn't equipped to handle the kind of conditions that JFK Jr. faced on Friday night. Maggie Cooper, CBS News, Fairfield, New Jersey. Over the years, people have learned to trust just one man when it comes to sending flowers. Not me, him, the FTD Mercury Man. And not every florist gets to put him on the door. In fact, only the very best do. So when someone you know deserves the best, ask for FTD by name. From the man who's done it best for nearly 90 years, the FTD Mercury Man. Order online at FTD.com. My neighbor works a post on a cereal that actually keeps kids quiet. Hmm. It's got brown sugar inside, frosting outside, post-frosted shredded wheat. Oh, man! Hi, Roger! Hi, Roger! Heard you're out! Why is it models always look 15? Wrinkles? Talk to her in about 20 years. At the Pons Institute, we don't give you hype, just results. Our age-defying lotion is proven to visibly reduce fine lines by up to 77%. Age-defying lotion, no hype, just younger-looking skin. There are so many reasons to love Pure One, and they just keep getting better and better. Now you can save an additional 25% during our summer sale and clearance. Hurry, sale ends July 31st, only at Pure One. There are those among us with very simple tastes. They only want the best. And for them, there's Fancy Feast Gourmet Cat Food. Exceptionally moist and delicious. Fancy Feast. Good taste is easy to recognize. Do you need fast allergy relief? Then you need the power of Zyrtec. Prescription Zyrtec starts working fast and lasts 24 hours. In studies, drowsiness was the most common side effect. Others included fatigue and dry mouth. Most were mild or moderate. To learn more about Zyrtec, ask your doctor or pharmacist. So when you need fast allergy relief, remember the power of Zyrtec. Have you tried these yet? Specialized blends from one a day. Not just herbs. Herbs, vitamins, and minerals for things like memory. Have you seen my keys? Where are the keys? 83. And energy. 
Excuse me. Excuse me. Even tension and mood. Help your body help itself with one a day specialized blends. They're just what you need to feel your best. From CBS News World Headquarters in New York, I'm Thalia Shores. And I'm Russ Mitchell, live outside of the Kennedy compound in Hyannisport, Massachusetts. Let's begin by giving you the latest on the investigation into the crash of John F. Kennedy Jr.'s plane. Giving up hope of a miraculous survival, the Coast Guard has changed its mission from search and rescue to a recovery effort. President Clinton has offered his prayers to the Kennedy family. And the world is watching. The latest Kennedy tragedy is dominating headlines here in the United States as well as overseas. Thalia? Thank you very much, Russ. Well, as the namesake of one of the most beloved presidents in history, the world has watched John Kennedy Jr. since his first steps. But it is not everyone who can say they really knew him. Time magazine columnist Margaret Carlson followed his career, has worked with him. He joins, she joins us from our Washington bureau this morning. Good morning to you. Good morning, Thalia. I understand that you were at the dinner, dinner, the president's dinner last night. What was the atmosphere there and what was said about JFK Jr.? Well, both the president uh, and the prime minister gave toasts uh, in which they began uh, remembering John Kennedy. Uh, the president talked about how fleeting life is and, and how its possibilities uh, can slip through your fingers. And uh, Barack, who has a, a, a great sense of America, um, almost had the same feeling, it seemed, that Americans do about John Kennedy. Uh, knew everything about uh, the president and his son, uh, the funeral, the families, uh, and uh, it, was a, it was a sad beginning uh, to the dinner. Ehud Barak of Israel, of course, is who you're talking about. What were your thoughts as you were hearing this, your having known uh, JFK Jr.? Well, I didn't know him in any sense other than having uh, interviewed him uh, for Time magazine. We wrote a piece about him launching his magazine, and we got the only interview at that time. And I was struck by how serious he was about journalism. I expected to find somebody who was going to be slightly more dilettantish. And he certainly knew about publishing, he knew about editing, he knew everything about what he was uh, embarking on. Uh, and then he became really part of the community. Um, you know, if you, if you wear your fame lightly, you can actually integrate yourself into normal society uh, in some ways, not in walking down the street in New York, perhaps, but uh, in the journalistic community, uh, he, he, uh, he was easy to talk to, if not easy to know. Well, after all that has been said about JFK Jr., what do you think has not been said? That he was trying to, it, it was interesting to me that he would choose a magazine. Uh, a magazine in and of itself is kind of risky these days. People are watching TV or going to the internet. So uh, that he would start a magazine about politics, try to do it in a very different way. It was a very uh, lively, engaging uh, way to look at politics and a way of being of it but not in it, in that we all thought, I guess, somewhere in the back of our minds, and it's coming out more now, that of course he would run for office, of course he would be a senator, of course he would be president uh, or, or uh, try to be president someday. You believe that yourself, that he may well have gotten into politics as opposed to staying sort of on the outside influencing politics? I think he expressed uh, to to people that you know he wasn't going to run for the Senate this time. Remember, there was a great deal of interest uh, about whether he would. He said he wouldn't, but in the way he said that he wouldn't, you knew that someday he would. Well, JFK Jr. possessed that responsibility, Kennedy responsibility, to do public service. Do Americans think believe that he fulfilled that public service? Not yet, in, in, I would think, in that he was, he was just beginning. It wasn't as if he turned his back on it, but that he embarked on, on, on one way of getting in. I like to think that journalism is a, is a way of serving the public, uh, and that he would have done more. And one of the things he did do, uh, he and Caroline, 
split the 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 responsibilities of the institutions with the and, Kennedy name. And that responsibility he, remains hers alone now. Margaret Carlson, we thank you for joining us this morning. And coming up on this morning, a photographic journey through the early years of JFK Jr. Look what just arrived. Peanut butter chocolate and cocoa Rice Krispie Treats. Two new additions to the Rice Krispie Treats family. That's funny. They don't look anything like you. Hmm? My Italian mom's cookie was always full of surprises. Like the Olive Gardens. Take their new seafood Alfredo. It's sauteed shrimp and crawfish tossed with your classic fettuccine Alfredo. Plus all the salad and breadsticks you want. The Olive Garden. When you're here, you're family. She was coming home to the jungle, to their untamed love for butter. Cut down by cholesterol until... I can't believe it's not butter. I can't believe it's not butter. The taste you love without the cholesterol. How civilized. You can't start the day without absolutely pure Tropicana Pure Premium. Everything's an occasion. Introducing hundreds of new Hallmarks for 99 cents. And where can you find the most 99 cent Hallmark cards? At your Hallmark Gold Crown store. Why not? Great news for all you cats. Chuck! Marv, we can't buy this stuff ourselves. <gasps> Woo! I'm not. The whiskers you love in a can now comes in the new Flavor Lock pouch. Whiskers? <laughs> what cats want? The fateful flight of John F. Kennedy Jr., his wife, and her sister. The impact on the Kennedy family and the nation. Tonight on the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. Tomorrow, Dave welcomes Mia Hamm and the world champion U.S. soccer team. The U.S. Uh, women's team is Babe City. That is what I'm Babe City. Tomorrow on The Late Show. This morning, the Coast Guard has all but given up hope of finding John F. Kennedy Jr., his wife, and her sister alive. After more than two days of searching the waters off Martha's Vineyard for Kennedy's downed plane, the Coast Guard announced the search and rescue effort was now a recovery mission. Coast Guard Admiral Richard Larrabee broke the painful news to the Kennedy family last night. They have been very understanding uh, all along and, and very appreciative of what, of what we have been trying to do. And, um, and it was very difficult for me to share this information with, with them. Divers will enter the water today to check out possible targets on the ocean floor that may be the wreckage of the Kennedy plane. No word yet from the Kennedy family. John Kennedy's only sister, Caroline, is at her home on New York's Long Island. The rest of the family is at the Kennedy compound in Hyannisport, where they are waiting and praying. At the New York City apartment, JFK Jr. shared with his wife, grieving friends and neighbors left flowers and messages. Coming up in our next hour on this morning, at 8.17, our Jose diaz Ballard investigates the dangers of small planes. He takes flight in a Piper Saratoga and follows the path of JFK Jr.'s plane. At 8.32, a look at the curse, so-called curse of the Kennedys, the many tragedies that have befallen the nation's first family of politics. And at 8.43, an insider's look at Carolyn Bassett Kennedy in our next hour on this morning. The address is CBS. Welcome home!
Welcome back to CBS This Morning. I'm Thalia Shuras in New York. And I'm Russ Mitchell in Hyannisport, Massachusetts. Here is the latest in the plane crash involving John F. Kennedy Jr., his wife Carolyn, and her sister Lauren. The Coast Guard is now focusing on recovering the lost plane. It is no longer a rescue operation. Divers will enter the water today to examine possible targets on the ocean floor. And President Clinton has offered his prayers to the Kennedy family. Federal investigators have set up a command post at Otis Air Force Base in Cape Cod, and that's where our Cynthia Bowers is standing by this morning. Good morning, Cynthia. Good morning, Russ. Voice has now been given to the words everyone has been reluctant to say. The three are presumed dead. Last night, the Coast Guard telephoned the Kennedy and Bassett families and told them that given the temperature of the waters off the coast of Martha's Vineyard, just 68 degrees, it's highly unlikely anyone could have survived in the sea for more than 12 to 18 hours. Kennedy's plane was not equipped with life vests or a lifeboat. As a result, what has been a rescue mission has now become a recovery mission. And late last night, search teams indicated they may have some possible leads. This morning, for the first time, divers will go into waters 60 to 80 feet deep and began to search several sites identified by a NOAA sonar ship, the Rudy, as possible targets. The focus of the search is now a four by six square mile area just off the southwest coast of Martha's Vineyard. The Rudy has been plowing through waters there in a motion Commander Sam DeBoe calls mowing the lawn. That is systematically going back and forth and has detected several objects protruding from the ocean floor. Now, the problem is, until you send divers down, you can't be sure if that sonar has detected a rock, an old shipwreck, or possibly a piece of the plane that was carrying John Kennedy, his wife Carolyn, and her sister Lauren Bissett. As the sad reality begins to sink in here this morning, there are plenty of unanswered questions. And joining us now to help answer some of them is a man who has been one of the lead investigators in this case, Coast Guard Rear Admiral Rick Larrabee. Thanks for joining us this morning, Admiral. First of all, um, you had to make a very tough phone call to the Kennedy and Bissett families last night. What were their reactions? Well, I think uh, based on the fact that we've been talking to them really since the beginning of the incident, um, they have been very understanding all along and, and been very gracious in this whole thing and very complimentary of, of our efforts. Um, I um, provided them with as much information as I could and, and, and said that it, it, uh, at this point uh, we, we really couldn't hold out much, much more hope based on what we knew. You've probably handled hundreds of overdue planes in your time. How rare is it that there was no distress call from the pilot and no transmission at all from any emergency beacons? Cindy, I, we do handle these. Uh, in, in most cases, the overdues uh, don't turn out to be uh, problems. Um, uh, but I think that's a question you really have to talk to the National Transportation Safety Board about. Well, as a professional lifesaver, how hard has it been for you to acknowledge that in this particular case there will be no rescue? Well, it's very difficult uh, waking up this morning and, and hearing your words and hearing the, the words of, of, of the rest of the news media. The, the reality, I think, is kind of set in for me, too. Okay, thank you very much, Rear Admiral Rick Larrabee, for joining us this morning. Now, Admiral Larrabee's phone call last night may have provided some closure for the family, but the investigation, which will now be handled by the NTSB, is just getting underway and, as said, could take six to nine months. Russ? Cynthia Bowers at Otis Air Force Base, thank you very much. And just to kind of give you an idea of what's happening here, not much. To my right, I can't see anything but television reporters. I see them on my left as well. So far, no word from the Kennedy family. The compound is about 75 yards behind me. Dahlia? Thanks, Russ. We'll be back to you in a bit. JFK Jr. was a frequent visitor to Martha's Vineyard, a Tony, Massachusetts resort that has long been a summer playground to the rich and famous. Well, now, as Jacqueline Adams reports, residents and visitors to the small island find themselves at a loss. Whether longtime resident or vacationer, the mood was the same on Martha's Vineyard. It touches me, and I have to know. It doesn't seem real yet, you know. Waiting to hear definitive word about the fate of the John Kennedy Jr. plane, there was shock, disbelief, and a sense of legacy lost. It's the saddest thing, really, you know. What is? They think as a couple that the two of them didn't, didn't get to make that final step and have children. In Chilmark, the town Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis chose to call home, residents were used to seeing the Kennedys. And they weren't personalities to us, they were just neighbors. He'd be on a 10 speed like anybody else, riding a bike out, sweating like everybody else with a headband on, cruising up and down State Road here. Uh, just like his mother years ago, he'd still just be riding on her bike. 
Martha's Vineyard natives know better than most the perils of the sea, the very slim chance of surviving in these cold, choppy waters. It's just so rough. I mean, you couldn't swim. I, I, I just can't imagine anybody being out there. I suppose it's possible. But. At the Chilmark Community Church, three candles burned in memory of three missing souls. It seems like a flower has been plucked before its, its maturity. And that's always sad, whenever that happens. On the beach where state police searched for debris, sadness came ashore with each crashing wave. Jacqueline Adams, CBS News, Chilmark, Martha's Vineyard. For more on John F. Kennedy Jr., we are joined now by Richard Reeves, a Kennedy historian and a CBS News consultant. Good morning to you. Good morning. We cannot not, use... Not, not such a good morning. No, good it morning. isn't. In fact, we cannot use the word recovery um, anymore. So what are your thoughts? Uh, well, I mean, my thoughts from the beginning were that there was almost no chance that, uh, that there were survivors and that probably uh, in the haze that... Uh, young John Kennedy thought, it's a fairly common era, I used to do this, mm. uh, coming in and thinking you're landing and then at the last minute realizing you're not, and he may have literally flown into the water. I, I am amazed, you know, if you walk around Manhattan uh, and pe you look like a New Yorker and mm -hmm. people come up to you now and, and the question they ask is, can you tell me where Tribeca is? Mm, I can imagine. So the nation is now beginning to feel this sinking in, I imagine then. I think it is. I don't know how long. It may be, you know, some of this, uh, I don't want to be cruel, but some of this is like w we've developed a national mentality. We want one story at a time. So you go from Monica to Kosovo to Mia uh, and now this. And, and we're kind of caught in that whirlpool of, uh, of national concern. I'm, I don't know that. I, uh, the most important thing about this, I think, it, in American terms, is that it extends to new generations, the Kennedy saga, which goes on and on. What do you mean by that? I mean that we are, we're living our lives through the, uh, through the Kennedys. I mean, not only we, the world. I mean, it was the first 19 minutes of Téhéran, the, the principal station in France, Germany right. suspended programming. Uh, but it is uh, in a way that in the, we have this wonderful big medieval family. One of the things about the Kennedys is there's so many of them. Right. So th with that many people, things keep happening. And we grew up obviously on television, not by accident with John Kennedy Jr. His father exploited the kids. Uh, and we now see them as a reflection in our own lives, the way people once saw biblical things or the Civil War. Uh, and, and now the story goes on. Is there a John F. Kennedy Jr. legacy? He was only 38 years old. I don't think, I, 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 I hate to say that, but no, I think his legacy is that the story goes on and perhaps that the, the great macho family, uh, Kennedy family, now for a period of time will, will be dominated by women, by his sister, by Kathleen Townsend, by Maria Shriver, uh, and that will be, but the he really is forever young, forever beautiful. Mm. Uh, he is going to, to be, we can see that even if now as we cover it, that the pictures of, of him as a young man uh, are what we're going to remember. And we're going to remember him uh, with his mother because he was an incomplete Kennedy. His mother did not want him to be uh, like the other Kennedy men, and I think she succeeded in that. Uh, but. Uh, fate took a hand or he made a mistake and, mm. and, and we'll remember him as young and beautiful like James Dean. We certainly will in the last 10 seconds and Caroline Kennedy Schlossberg. Terrific uh, person and I think that she'll keep her privacy and she'll make her own contribution. She's a good writer. She has things to say and uh, I admire her and uh, but to succeed on that level, you have to separate yourself a little bit from the family, and I think and she introduces herself as Kath, uh, as Caroline Schlossberg, right. if you meet her, uh, and that, that means a lot, I think. A difficult time, needless to say, for her and the rest of the Kennedy family. Thank you so much, Richard Reeves, for joining us this Thanks, morning. Thanks, 
Now, Craig Allen is here with a look at this morning's weather. Craig. All right. Good morning, Thalia. Good morning to all of you. The heat wave across the Northeast is one of the reasons why there is so much haze and pollutants in the air. We take it to New York City, where the temperatures for the fourth day in a row climbed to about the upper 90s. It was 98 yesterday. It will probably be about 90, 95 today. And all these folks are just trying to find ways to cool off. And a lot of folks did head to the beach, obviously. Now, if we take a look at the satellite picture, you can see all these clouds coming down across the Great Lakes. This is what could hamper search uh, efforts today. These are thunderstorms which are going to try to break this five day heat wave. So as they swing on down, conditions will get worse later on today. There are thunderstorms out in portions of the Rockies as well. Rest of the nation, hundreds across the southwestern states. Very nice for the Pacific Northwest. Additional showers and thunderstorms in the southeast. And again, some late day strong thunderstorms for the northeast. That is the nation's weather. Let's go to your hometown. In Albany, thunderstorms are possible later today. Same thing around Boston, high 91. Charlotte, North Carolina, hazy, hot and humid. Same in Huntsville with a chance of thunderstorms. Sunshine up to 97 in Tulsa. Indianapolis, thunderstorms, the high near 90. Clearing skies in Lake Geneva. Billings, sunshine, the high 85. Denver, thunderstorms are possible also this afternoon, but a sunny, warm day in Bakersfield. Salem, Oregon, sunshine, the high 87 in Lewiston, sunny and 83. Still ahead on this morning, JFK Jr.'s love affair with celebrity. Attorney Lynn Holt had it all. A successful career and a loving husband who was also her law partner. It's fun. I don't love you anymore. Until he left her and took the business, employees and all. Now she's starting a new firm with new partners. Have we met? It's my commercials. This fall, she's going to get a little justice. This is my company, and this is my bathroom. Family Law. To us. CBS Monday this fall. Guess what? I've got one employee with HIV and another returning to work soon. My managers are uneasy with workplace accommodation, ADA compliance. Where do I start? The CDC helped us. You know the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention? Just call them up. To get your free kit on managing HIV AIDS in the workplace, call our 1-800 number or visit our website. AIDS, it's your business. The CDC? Yeah. Thanks. I'm calling them today. Well, the family has just been through so much. Uh, it's, uh, you don't know what to say. You know, you wish that uh, you, know, you could be there for the family in some way. Um, it's just hard to believe. For some people, the image of John F. Kennedy Jr. is one of a five-star celebrity, a handsome face that often graced the covers of magazines. But for others, it is a picture that dates back to when John was just a child. Byron Pitts has a snapshot of the early years. So of all your pictures, this is your favorite? Yeah, the one with the inscription of the kids dancing. Cecil Stoughton was the official Kennedy White House photographer. For Captain Stoughton, who captured beautifully a happy moment at the White House. And John F. Kennedy, his typical unreadable signature. But after an estimated 80,000 snapshots, a mile or more of film, Cecil Stoughton says he felt more like family. This particular one is, was made in uh, two weeks before Dallas. So this was the day that Jackie taught him how to salute. Sharing in triumphs and tragedies then and now. It's just a sad time. And uh, I feel very strongly that uh, I've lost a good friend. Stoughton says he is saddened but not surprised. Adventure is a part of every Kennedy man. And flying was one Kennedy boy's passion. John loved helicopters. And this was a highlight of his life, right on his daddy's lap. Did he love flying as, as? He couldn't live unless he could see a helicopter every day. Is that and right? I gave him, I gave him a photograph of one, and he carried it around like a toy, you know, like a Linus blanket. And it was, he always had a, a helicopter in his mind or in his mouth. And of course, he couldn't say helicopter; he'd say helicopter. Cecil Stoughton lives near the Kennedy Space Center with his wife and his memories of a family and a boy the camera always loved and whose legacy has always seemed cursed. Byron Pitts, CBS News, Merritt Island, Florida.
more now on the Kennedy family, and for that we go to Russ Mitchell in Hyannisport. Russ? Thank you very much, Thaya. It now appears that Caroline Kennedy will become the keeper of President Kennedy's legacy. She has never enjoyed being a public person and has managed to stay out of the spotlight that has followed the Kennedy family for years. Richard Schlesinger has more. This is my daughter, Caroline Kennedy. She has one of the world's most famous names, but her face is familiar only to serious Kennedy watchers. Caroline, JFK Jr.'s older sister, has lived on the fringe of the Kennedy spotlight for most of her adult life, by choice. If she is the last surviving child of John F. Kennedy, can she hold on to her privacy? Yes, I think she's learned uh, how to do it. She hasn't been able to duck the cameras all the time. Her 1986 wedding to Edwin Schlossberg was one of those Kennedy events that took on the feel of a state ceremony. Caroline! Caroline has appeared in public when she's had to, but seems less at ease in front of a crowd than some other members of her family. One of the most powerful memories that we have of growing up is the number of people who come up to us and say, your father changed my life. It seems ironic, but one of the few times she sought the spotlight was to promote her book called The Right to Privacy. Well, is it difficult for you to maintain your privacy? It actually is not that difficult uh, for me. I mean, I do make an effort to do so. It was almost as though Caroline got off the hook while Jackie, or JFK Jr., satisfied the public's Kennedy curiosity. She didn't go out to the events, semi-public or public events, that she was invited to. Yet anyone who has lost a family member knows something about what Caroline has gone through. The difference is she may now have lost all of what was once her entire immediate family, a huge private tragedy of immense public interest. Richard Schlesinger, CBS News, New York. I want to tell you about something that's happened in the last few seconds. As we see behind me at the Kennedy compound, there is some activity there. Some folks are outside. We don't know who those folks are. But again, the Kennedy family has not made a statement as of yet. Coming up next on this morning, a closer look at Carolyn Bissett Kennedy, the woman who managed to steal JFK's heart. Stay tuned. There's more to this morning. He's like my own son, you know. And I'm sure, you know, his wife's family is, you know, thinking about them, too. Is there such a beautiful girl. For the 1998-99 TV season, the results are in. And only one network can be called number one. The winner is CBS. More people in more homes across the country are spending their prime time with us. For great television. The address is CBS, America's most watched network. Latinos can't fight. Black girls cannot dress. Handicap people take forever. Open up your mind before you open up your mouth. Alcoholism within a family is like a tornado. You never know what the next storm will bring. Many family members react with fear, some with grief, and others with anger. But unlike a tornado, this is a storm that rages inside the home. There's help in Al-Anon, a mutual support group for families and friends affected by alcoholism. If you're concerned about someone else's drinking, call Al-Anon today, 1-888-4-AL-ANON. Al-Anon, we're here to help. Energy efficient appliances do a great job of using less energy. So you save money on every utility bill. There are lots of ways to make your home more comfortable and energy efficient. And an energy efficient home helps to save something else too. The Earth, because using less energy creates less pollution. For easy tips, write Alliance to Save Energy, P.O. Box 33939A, Washington, D.C., 20033. Well, now you're going to scare away, Michael. 
Micah, you want to go for a little walk and go get a donut? Yeah. Get the keys. Friends don't let friends drive drunk. From CBS News World Headquarters in New York, I'm Thalia Shuras. And I'm Russ Mitchell, live at the Kennedy Compound in Hyannisport, Massachusetts. Of course, the eyes of the world are focused on the compound here, waiting for word from the Kennedy clan. But for another family, the grief is twofold following the apparent loss of two sisters, Carolyn Bissett and her sister Lauren. The Bissets were from Greenwich, Connecticut, and that's where our Randall Pinkston joins us live. Good morning, Randall. Good morning, Russ. Greenwich police officers are posted on the private road on the street where the parents of Carolyn and Lauren Bissett live. So far, the Bissett family has made no public comment to reporters as they confront the loss of two daughters and a son-in-law. Lauren and Carolyn Bissett grew up in Greenwich, raised by their mother and stepfather. Carolyn, the youngest of three sisters, graduated from St. Mary's Parochial School, now Greenwich Catholic School, in 1983. Classmate Deborah Lamoureux remembers a girl who was always smiling, always laughing. Everybody really loved her. She was just revered by both the guys and the girls. In one of her yearbooks, Lamoureux found an autograph from Carolyn Bassett. It says, Deb, I can't believe I finally made it. You made Doc's class and my first year a good one. Thanks. Love, Carolyn. But this morning's headline in the local paper sums it up, hope fades. Both Carolyn and Lauren left Greenwich after graduating from college. Well, Carolyn Bassett was working for Calvin Klein before her marriage to John F. Kennedy Jr. Lauren got a job as an investment banker with Morgan Stanley. This morning, their survivors include Lauren's twin sister and three stepsisters, all of whom are grieving. Russ? Randall Pinkston in Greenwich, Connecticut. Thank you very much. Now, let's go to Thalia in New York. Russ, thanks once again. John F. Kennedy was a child of Washington and a man with links to Hollywood as well. Ladies and gentlemen, meet George. John F. Kennedy Jr.'s George magazine was a merger of the two worlds he knew best, Washington politics and Hollywood glitz. The entrepreneur himself seemed to embody a perfect blend of political pedigree and movie star good looks. He was so awesome to look at. If there ever was a personification of what a movie star should look like, it certainly was John Kennedy Jr. JFK Jr. caught the acting bug at Brown University. His professors said he could have made a career of it, but his mother reportedly discouraged the idea, and JFK Jr. himself eventually agreed with her. Uh, I enjoyed uh, doing plays at college like many other people, uh, but it was never um, even remotely a, a, a career option for me. I came over to bring you this wedding present, but they told me that the whole thing had been called off, so... <laughs> this is how rumors get started. The camera loved him. He didn't mind being in the camera's eye. Um, all those times he was photographed fooling around the park, you know, he'd rip off his shirt and go topless and show off his great physique. In 1988, JFK Jr. was People Magazine's sexiest man alive. He attracted the romantic interest of Hollywood's biggest stars, including Madonna, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Daryl Hannah. And when he married Calvin Klein PR woman Carolyn Bissett, even Hollywood celebrities at state dinners were starstruck. I even saw some very top celebrities take out these little pocket cameras. Certain names were taking pictures to have of Carolyn and John Kennedy Jr. Well, some of JFK Jr.'s good works involved a prestigious New York theater company, Naked Angels. He was an active board member for the risk-taking theater company that included some of Broadway's biggest stars. He also loved children and took the time to be with children who were less fortunate than most of us, and many of us did not, in fact, know that he was involved with these children and in other works. Coming up in our next hour, more extensive coverage of this American tragedy, the apparent loss of John F. Kennedy Jr., his wife, Carolyn Bassett Kennedy, and his sister-in-law, Lauren Bassett. Stay with us. When I first saw the news, I couldn't believe that it had happened, and I'm very sorry for the whole family. I'm, I'm still in shock because I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but um, my heart goes out to the family because they seem like really nice people. 
You already know how important calcium is for your bones, but did you know that 85% of women still don't get enough? So start your day with Total. It's the only leading cereal that's an excellent source of calcium, even before adding milk. In fact, Total has more calcium than the milk itself. No other leading cereal comes close. Simple, low-fat, delicious. So good, you can feel it in your bones. Total, Total Raisin Bran, Total Corn Flakes. One bowl, one great source of calcium. You wouldn't believe what some people use to improve their hair's condition, when all you really need is a blow dryer and heat-activated Thermosilk to make your hair healthier. Thermosilk, where there's heat, there's healthy hair. All right, friskies, who's up for some breakfast? Relax, kid, you're not on the menu. Now here's the good stuff. Mmm, -mm, love that taste. Friskies! Need brakes? Get the best in the business to install them. And a lifetime guarantee, honored at every Midas nationwide. Go safely, go Midas. How can these monks balance their love of gassy foods with their vow of silence with Beano? It has a natural food enzyme that helps stop gas before it starts. Beano before, quiet after. Problem? Doctor said my cholesterol is still too high. What about diet and exercise? They didn't do enough. So? He suggested adding Lipitor. Lipitor, the number one prescribed medication for lowering cholesterol. In clinical studies, Lipitor with diet was proven to lower bad cholesterol 39 to 60 percent, total cholesterol 29 to 45 percent, triglycerides 19 to 37 percent. He said over 4 million people have started taking Lipitor to lower their cholesterol. Lipitor is not for everyone, including people with liver disease or possible liver problems, women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. There'll be blood tests to check for liver problems. Tell your doctor about muscle pain or weakness, as these may be signs of serious side effects. You take Lipitor once a day. Ask your doctor or pharmacist for more information on Lipitor and call 1-888-LIPITOR. Well? Lipitor did it. My cholesterol's way down. Lipitor, the lower numbers you're looking for. A nation prays and waits. Searching a 1,200-mile area. As the search for JFK Jr. continues, the latest on an American tragedy, 48 hours tonight. On tonight's Late Late Show, Oliver Platt, Jason Biggs, plus the key to happiness. <laughs> Russ Mitchell is in Hyannisport, Massachusetts this morning at the Kennedy Family Compound. And uh, Russ, I want to come to you right away. You were talking uh, before about a little bit of activity behind you. What can you tell us? Can't tell you much. We just saw a couple of people at the compound, uh, I guess about 15 minutes ago, but don't know who it was. Again, no statement has been made from the Kennedy family <laughs> whatsoever. I mean, it's interesting. I was in Martha's Vineyard over the weekend, and. I think people our age, I'm 39 years old, eight months older than uh, JFK Jr. And I, when I heard about this on Saturday, it was like a cousin that I knew but had never met was gone. Uh, of all the tragedies that we've seen over the past few years involving so quote unquote celebrities, this is the one that I think that affected me the most. And when I talk to people our age, Sally, and I hope you don't mind if I say our age, We're uh, together, indeed. <laughs> I, I think that this is something that affects many of us deeply. Indeed it is something that affects many of us deeply in large measure I think because what we had watched uh, John F. Kennedy Jr. grow up with us and he was developing into a person who understood it seems who understood himself and was enjoying marriage. That's uh, right. We've got more coming up at our next hour. Stay with us.